Like, what even is fatigue? Today we're going to talk about load management, just the very basics of what is load, what is fatigue, why is this so important, why are we sports scientists and coaches talking about it all the time, what's the difference between internal and external load. So we're talking about just the basics today, not what you can do with it, but just what it is, why it's important, the basics of how we measure it. So what is load management? Well, basically we're trying to conceptualize and operationalize fatigue measuring fatigue, how much work an athlete has done, which is external load. We'll get to that in a second and how they're adapting to it, which is internal load. We're tracking, understanding and adjusting for the amount of stress and accumulated fatigue an athlete is going through in training and competition so we can get the best out of them. Load management is also absolutely essential for reducing injury risks. For example, when an athlete is too fatigued and then tries to do something high intensity, they are then at risk for injury. And that's something that we absolutely do not want. So we need to control load. Recovery is obviously a key component of recovering from stress and fatigue. So recovery is a key component of load management as well. And as there's no single scientific definition of fatigue that really functions in all realms of sport, we've broken it down into two different kinds of load specifically. The first one is external load. And this is what most athletes look at in their training plans. This is the amount of work that has been done during the day. This is what sports scientists look at when we're using GPS data. It's essentially how many repetitions were completed. For example, if you did a five by five set of squats, that was 25 repetitions of back squat or front squat or whatever. So we're looking at volume, total volume. We're looking at total distance as well. So if we're having a speed training session and we're running 50s or we're running 30s or 10s, we're gonna add all of those up to figure out how much distance we covered during the day. And that's the external load. It could also be minutes played, numbers of sprints run, speed at which these sprints were run or top speed or average speed. Those are all external load and they are the easiest to track. And sometimes we sport scientists or even athletes and even coaches, sport coaches fall into the trap of only checking in on the external load. It's not at all psychological. It's not at all physiological. It's not checking what's happening inside or how the fatigue is accumulated. It's just checking how much fatigue or load is theoretically on this piece of paper. Obviously the external load factors we're going to adjust in our programming. So if I see that an athlete isn't recovering very well from the amount of volume or the amount of repetitions that I've given, then I'm gonna drop down their external load so that it fits better to what they need, what they're doing, their goals, their recovery, their performance. Internal load on the other hand is the relative psychophysiological stress imposed on the athlete. And these are the adaptions that are happening inside based on the external load or the work that we did. So we do the work and then something happens inside. If you've ever heard about generalized adaption syndrome or supercompensation, all of those buzzwords that you learned during your first semester of sports science study, these are the internal processes and characteristics of adapting to an external stressor of when we train, now our bodies have to get better. Things in the muscles change, our tendons change, our nervous system changes, and those are all internal load changes that we don't see on the outside and we don't see them on paper, and they're extremely individual. And that's why tracking internal load cannot be jumped over because everybody responds differently even to the same stressor. If I give two different athletes these five by five back squats, just as an example, they're both gonna respond differently to that and I won't know how they respond differently unless I'm tracking their internal load somehow. We do this often with wellness questionnaires because it's budget friendly, but if you have something like HRV or heart rate tracking, there's a number of other things. Cortisol tracking is one of those as well you can track internal load pretty specifically and accurately, but it is budget friendly like with wellness questionnaires. Examples of internal load are things like muscle soreness, any type of pain, any fatigue, how well an athlete's sleeping, their mood, their heart rate, their blood pressure, how well they feel like they've regenerated, their perception of their wellness status at the moment. And that's why we can use self-report wellness questionnaires where we just ask an athlete, how are you sleeping? How's your mood? How much stress do you have? To get a general idea of how their bodies are adapting to the external load. I hope this really simple breakdown of programming and load management and why this is important is helpful. Again, it's just very basic. We're not talking about what to do with the data. That's coming at a later time. Understand the difference between internal and external load. Pay attention to both of them. And remember, regeneration is also a super important part of load management. So don't skip out on it. Mm -hmm.